Okay, so this next section is going to take a look at, um, it's mainly the physiology of the PNS, um, and we'll kind of run through that. And then I'll take you to some other documents too that I will have posted. Um, so you have to understand the PNS and the CNS when we get to that too, but the parasympathetic um, nervous system in order to understand the drug mechanisms. Um, so let's look at the parasympathetic. Um, that's our rest and digest function. Um, the slowing of the heart rate. Sorry, there's some typos a little bit in here. I, I did this, um, it was like a voiceover and it, it was typing for me, but there's some um, typos. So slowing of the heart rate, um, increased gastric secretion, emptying of the bladder, emptying of the bowel, um, constrictions of the pupil and near vision, um, con contracting bronchial smooth muscle. So drugs that alter the parasympathetic nervous system are used primarily to affect the GI system. Um, the bladder or the eye. Um, the eye, we use a lot of, um, there's different eye drops, like an atropine eye drop, um, and that will be used to constrict the pupil. Um, for the bladder, we'll talk about this um, in the other slides too, but a lot of it's for overactive bladder use. Um, and then there's other ones that are used for the GI system. Now taking a look at your sympathetic nervous system, um, a lot of this regulates your cardiovascular system. So a lot of the drugs um, that are used through here are for the heart or will have an effect on the heart. Um, it does affect your body temperature, and your sympathetic nervous system is that fight or flight. Um, it starts the acute stress response, um, and that's when you get the fight or flight reaction, which is the increased heart rate, blood pressure, um, and then you're getting shunting of blood from the skin and viscera to the skeletal muscles where it's needed most. It also affects bronchodilatation to improve oxygenation, so it'll open up the airways. Um, and those sympathetic will dilate the pupils versus constricting, which you see in the parasympathetic. It's good for energy resources, um, glucose for the brain, fatty acid for the muscles. So many of the drugs that um, alter functions through the sympathetic control are primarily used for the heart, blood vessels, and lungs. So a lot of times you'll, um, these drugs will be um, like an epinephrine, um, or it can be used for asthma, like an albuterol medication, and when we go through the certain receptors, you'll get a better understanding of how those work as well. So in order to learn this, if you understand the transmitters and receptors, it's going to make it a whole lot easier um, of, you know, to get the drugs and put it together because it'll kind of make more sense to you. So the transmitters that you will see are acetylcholine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. Those are the ones that you'll see with the sympathetic and parasympathetic. I have another chart that we'll go through that gives it a better description as to which ones go with which. And then you have to look at receptor types. Cholinergic receptors, which is usually goes along with your PNS, the, um, I'm sorry, the parasympathetic nervous system. This typically mediates the responses to acetylcholine. And then there's two subtypes within it, which is the muscarinic or nicotinic. And a lot of these um, you'll hear an anticholinergic medication or a cholinergic um, medication. So it's either the agonist or an antagonist. Muscarinic and cholinergic are pretty much, um, they mean the same thing essentially. Um, adrenergic receptors, this is the one that usually is with the sympathetic nervous system. These immediate responses to the epinephrine and norepinephrine. So just think about epinephrine um, and the response with epinephrine. So that's where you're getting this fight or flight um, type reaction with them. They also have subtypes within them. You have the alpha-1 and alpha-2, and then beta-1 and beta-2. So that's why, as I mentioned before, you'll hear like a beta blocker or a beta-2 agonist, which is like albuterol, which is an inhaler. So when we go through them, if you understand what the normal response is to activation of like alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2, you can put it together with the drugs and you'll understand what the drug does. So it's important to understand what these receptors do, what, what the normal activation is of them. And then you can apply the drugs, either it being an agonist or an antagonist to that receptor. The book really gives a good description on how to do this. And you may have to read it once or twice to kind of let it sink in a little bit or understand it. So now let's take a look at the book on Moodle. Um, this is the one that goes through the PNS. Um, and at the beginning, there's a lot of physiology here. So if you, you, know, you need to refresh on that, definitely refresh on your um, physiology of the nervous system. So as I mentioned, autonomic nervous system response, you either have your sympathetic, which is your fight or flight, or parasympathetic, which is your rest and digest. So kind of remember that, sympathetic, fight or flight, parasympathetic is rest or digest functions. 
Now, if you go down here and you look at this chart, this side is your sympathetic, um, and then we have this side where we have it divided out to parasympathetic nervous system. Now you look at the neurotransmitters, typically parasympathetic is usually acetylcholine, or is acetylcholine. Sympathetic is usually, it can be acetylcholine, but more commonly it's usually norepinephrine or epinephrine. So if you look at sympathetic, just think, fright or flight, that's what we kind of went through with a normal response to the nervous system. Dilates the pupil, um, inhibits uh, salivary gland, gland secretion, relaxes bronchi in the lungs, it'll accelerate the heart, inhibits activity of the stomach and, and intestines, um, the pancreas, etc. It'll stimulate glucose release. So sometimes, like if you're on a beta blocker, sometimes it'll affect the, um, their sugar levels. Um, it does stimulate the uh, adrenal medulla and then inhibits bladder um, emptying and then promotes ejaculation and then vaginal contractions. Because that's the other thing, too, like you'll hear, and we'll go through them, too, an alpha blocker. Um, we use alpha blockers for um, benign prosthetic hypertrophy, and some alpha blockers also have, um, they, they actually can be used for hypertension as well. And they can actually, they're actually a good choice for an elderly male that has both. And I'll cover that in um, a next, uh, one of the next documents that we'll look at. Now, if you go over to the parasympathetic, it's kind of the opposite, constricts the pupil of the eye, you know, stimulates salivary gland secretion, constricts the bronchi in the lungs. It'll slow the heart. Um, stimulates activity in the stomach and intestines, pancreas, etc., gallbladder, promotes bladder emptying. So that's completely opposite. You get sympathetic, it inhibits um, emptying of the bladder. So that's why a lot of these agents on this side <clears throat> are used for overactive bladder. Versus this side, if you look at this one, a lot of times there's medications that we use for urinary retention. So it actually will um, help them um, empty the bladder. So if you understand what the parasympathetic um, division does and the sympathetic um, nervous system does, you'll and then if you know the transmitters that it affects, you'll understand the drugs because it'll the drug it'll you know it'll link it all together for you. And I kind of say the same thing down here um, about the nervous system and like epinephrine, and then a, going back to the agonist and antagonist, like a sympathetic agonist. Or you'll hear adrenergic agonists. They're the same thing. Um, it affects the sympathetic nervous system. A sympathetic antagonist or an adrenergic antagonist is the opposite effect of the sympathetic nervous system. And as I mentioned in the other lectures, these drugs work directly through our normal physiologic processes. They are essentially just antagonists or agonists to that transmitter or receptor areas. This is just another chart showing um, the neuron and receptors and like your sympathetic usually is typically epi and norepinephrine. So just think about sympathetic and what does epinephrine and norepinephrine do. Parasympathetic is typically acetylcholine. Now this, this chart is important. Um, if you look at it, I think it'll help um, put it together. So if you learn the activations of alpha-1 and 2, beta-1 and beta-2, nicotinic and muscarinic, it's going to make it a lot easier on you. So right now we're looking at the PNS, we're looking at the autonomic nervous system, and let's look at the sympathetic first. So your sympathetic nervous system is going to um, it's gonna affect your alpha receptors and your beta receptors. Sometimes it'll target one area versus another area depending on the drug. Your beta receptors are either beta 1 or beta 2. Your alpha receptors are alpha 1 or alpha 2. And then We'll talk about the parasympathetic too, but your parasympathetic is the muscarinic receptors, um, and then you have the nicotinic receptors too. So now when you look down at this chart, um, I'm not trying to overwhelm you. It's kind of the same information. It's just basically um, putting it together like you know in a different form. Your parasympathetic stimulants, these are... Um, which, well, actually, let's talk about sympathetic first. So sympathetic, remember I mentioned your alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2. So you're looking at sympathetic stimulants. These are your adrenergic agonists. So if we're turning it on, what are you going to have happen? You're going to have an increase in the heart rate, um, increase in your pulse, 
there's going to be um, your bronchioles will relax, your pupils dilate, relax uterine muscles, and increase blood sugar. So any drug that is an adrenergic agonist can have these effects. Now, if you look at the opposite, which is an adrenergic antagonist, one that's going to be turning off the sympathetic nervous system, it's going to have a decrease in the pulse, decrease in the blood pressure, and constrict bronchioles. That's like, so an adrenergic antagonist would be like a beta blocker because you're blocking, um, you know, the beta cells, the activation of the sympathetic nervous system. That's why it's decreasing your blood pressure and decreasing the heart rate, which is common with beta blockers. However, a lot of times people who have an underlying history of asthma, beta blockers can potentiate um, like a reactive airway. And that's because it kind of can hit these other receptors, causing the lungs to be restricted a little bit. You know, not always. Some patients do fine with it. But that's how you get that side effect of having um, the constriction. Now, if you're like going back to this one, if you're looking at epinephrine, epinephrine will hit all of them. It hits alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2. It's going to affect a lot of systems. That's why it's so useful, though, for like an anaphylactic shock or a code um, because it's basically stimming. It's shunting blood, and then it's also um, increasing the BP in their pulse. So it's just essentially a lot of these just work. It's working through our nervous system. Now going to the parasympathetic, which is your rest and digest, um, these are the muscarinic or nicotinic. Muscarinic is the same exact thing as an acolinergic um, or a muscarinic antagonist would be the same thing as an anticholinergic agent. So now if you're turning on the parasympathetic nervous system through a cholinergic agonist, you're going to have a decreased BP, a decreased pulse, um, constrict bronchioles, um, pupil constriction, increased urinary contraction, which is why um, a lot of these, like the overactive bladder medications like Detrol, um, these work through the parasympathetic nervous system, and that's, you know, essentially how they work, or an increase in peristalsis. Now, the indirect, we're not going to really take a look at these. I want you to focus more on um, the agonist and antagonist. So now if we look at parasympathetic depressants, it's, or the antagonist, it's going to be the opposite of what a, the parasympathetic nervous system would do. So it's going to increase the pulse, decrease mucus secretions, decrease GI motility, increase urinary retention, and dilate pupils. These medications are also known as anticholinergics, which you will hear a lot of. And, you know, you're not going to hear um, a parasympathetic depressant a lot. You're going to hear the term anticholinergic. Um, which are cholinergic antagonists. Um, the biggest thing is because a lot there's a lot of side effects with the anticholinergics. And we do try to like refrain from use in the elderly population. They're more sensitive to it. Usually they'll have the urinary retention with it. Um, it essentially, these medications will, will dry them out. You know, they have decreased secretions and all that as well. This I just put down here because everybody studies differently, but it's just an idea if you feel like it helps you or remember, essentially, like if you were to turn on M1 or M2, which are the muscarinic, what, what is the normal response or what are the normal target organs that it, it hits? Because that's essential to understand this, um, understanding these normal receptors and the normal response. And then you apply the antagonist-antagonist factors to it, and then it will hopefully make sense. <laughs> Okay, this is just kind of a review. I just wanted to go over it, though, because I put this up there. Um, let's look at adrenergic first. Remember, sympathetic um, nervous system. Hits alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2. That's your adrenergic or, or your sympathetic. Most of the um, epinephrine will hit all of these. That's why, like I mentioned, it's so effective for, like, a code or um, for anaphylaxis. It hits alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2. It hits all of them which is kind of rare for a drug to hit all of these receptors. Norepinephrine hits alpha-1, alpha-2, and beta-1. does not hit beta-2. This is the parasympathetic or the cholinergic agents. And like I mentioned, it's nicotinic or muscarinic. And the acetylcholine is, um, is with that one. And then, okay, so let's look at alpha-1. This is kind of um, going through where it hits, but what does it do when you turn on alpha-1? Alpha-1 is present in the blood vessels, the eyes, the prostate, 
the male sex organs, organs in the bladder. This is kind of like that same um, idea as the chart I went through. It just kind of laid out for you if you hit each one because it doesn't go specifically into um, what alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2 do because it just goes through if you hit the adrenergic um, nervous system, it's not giving you more specifics with alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. So if you have alpha-1, this will cause um, pupil dilatation, constriction of the arteries and veins, bladder, and prostate constriction, and it'll affect ejaculation. That's why the alpha blockers will work for um, BPH. Alpha-2, this one, you really can kind of stay away from having to study with it. This Drugs typically do not target this receptor, unless, like I said, it's epinephrine that it hits all of them, but we don't really use drugs that hit alpha-2. Beta-1 is located in the kidney and heart, so it's going to affect the kidney and heart. It'll cause an elevation of heart rate, the contractile force, cardiac output, renin release, which will increase their BP. Um, beta-2 is present in many tissues, so there's a lot of medications that hit beta-2. Um, it opens the airways. It um, causes vasodilatation on the heart, lung, and skeletal um, tissues. It can cause an elevated blood sugar and then increase um, skeletal strength as well. So remember, just think fight or flight um, and knowing what beta-2 does. What does beta-2 do? And these are all your answers essentially right there. If you are, if it's an antagonist, it's going to be the opposite of these. Um, if it's an agonist, it's going to be, this is what it's going to do. So um, that's why I was mentioning it's so important to understand that concept. Okay, so I know it seems like a lot of information um, but read your text. It really does put the whole um, process down for you. It, it's just a matter of um, understanding it. And just, honestly, you might have to read it twice to kind of get a full understanding of it. Um, but like I said, the biggest things are knowing um, these receptors and transmitters and what happens when you turn them on or turn them off. Because it will help you understand all these drugs um, in the future.